corny arrogance and ignorance behavior. What we have learned thus far, men who are arrogant act superior over others, disrespect others also want to be admired and respected. Ignorant men don't listen, don't absorb the information presented to them, don't want to learn anything new, also are selfish, and don't use their brains for practical things. Confidence and arrogance There is a thin line that separates a guy you ought to date from a guy you ought not to. When a man has confidence, he believes and feels that he can rely on someone or something with firm trust. When a man exudes arrogance, he reveals and has an exaggerated sense of one's abilities and importance. Both gals and guys tend to hate arrogant traits in men, and everyone likes confidence. Modesty shows a quality or state of moderate estimation in one's abilities. Philippians 4 5 says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. When a man can do things in moderation, he avoids excessiveness and going to extremes, especially in one's behavior or political opinions. This reveals the ability to take action or make something less extreme, intense, or violent. Practical education, discipline, guidance, and daily intake of high nutritional and protein foods help form self-concepts. As an adult, some concepts are already implanted into the subconscious data stores, but without the practical formation of self-concepts, a person cannot make wise choices. The function of your subconscious mind is to store and retrieve data. Its job is to ensure that you respond exactly the way you are programmed. Your subconscious mind makes everything you say and do fit a pattern consistent with your self-concept. In general, self-concept is thought of as our perceptions of our abilities, behavior, and unique characteristics. A mental picture of who you are as a person. For example, beliefs such as I am an arrogant person or I am a confident person are part of an overall self-concept. Self-concept tends to be malleable as a youth because they are still going through the process of self-discovery and identity formation. As people age, self-perceptions become detailed and organized as people form better ideas of who they are, what is important to them, and what is expected of them. Conscious men are not arrogant by many standards, these men are pseudo-spiritual. Signs of a spiritual man, they recognize themselves in all beings, they live their life from a place of complete humility and sincerity, they love without expecting to be loved back, they are comfortable with not knowing, they trust life's wisdom, they have no interest in being who people think they should be, their wisdom is their own, they forgive easily, they give without expecting anything in return, their heart is at peace even amid adversity, they embrace all that comes their way, they purify their soul of attachments, they no longer look outside themselves for the fulfillment, they see themselves as a spiritual being having a human experience, and they delight themselves in quietness and solitude. The unconscious mind comprises mental processes that are inaccessible to consciousness but influence behavior, feelings, or judgments. Sigmund Freud said, the unconscious mind is the primary source of human behavior. The unconscious influences our behavior and experiences, even though we are unaware of these underlying influences. The unconscious can include repressed desires, feelings, habits, hidden memories, reactions, and thoughts. Other things to watch for, how he treats others, admitting mistakes, maintaining eye contact, his general behavior, willingness to learn, do rather than say, what is said and how it's said, and his social relationships. While seeking excessive or negative attention makes a man appear arrogant. A lack of awareness for one's actions and practical education makes one appear ignorant. Some people embody arrogance to brag about things they have achieved, and others embody arrogance to cover up missing links of something they lack. Either action shows signs of negative behavior. Arrogance and ignorance can over time lead to corniness, and to appear corny is to lack sentimental thoughts while lost in an old-fashioned style. The old-fashioned style reveals an aggressive but dominant personification with false and misleading facts, and most times distortion plays a huge factor. Ordinary people form these actions and behavior in everything they do and say all while, believing they're embodying diversity. But most people don't care about diversity enough to change their evil ways, so avoid believing in diversity without being true to self first. Once a person hasn't developed the ability to make wise choices, they lack true understanding. After that bitterness and envy form into the heart, which tends to transpire through immoral acts. Once you lack respect for yourself and others, the probability of crime increases. As an adult you can lead youth in the right direction, too many adults are leading them astray. When teens are exposed to guns and violence, they get overwhelmed and often get locked up before reality hits them. They don't get murder charges carries a death sentence, and an accessory charge of murder carries a life sentence for each person that ends up dead. Most murders happen while other serious crimes are taking place such as, assault and battery, burglary, robbery, selling illegal drugs, or sexual assaults. Also, extortion is a serious crime whether it is done against a customer as a pimp or prostitute. Teens need to comprehend the time they face, will be spent away from family and friends for some this will be indefinite. For the teens who can't comprehend these charges, it means being present during or taking part in a serious crime. Some individuals commit these types of crimes, spend a lifetime going through appeal courts to get turned down for parole, every time. And basically, 
All this could lead to a lifetime on the run looking for an escape. Serious crimes lead to an uncontrollable mind, the person committing the crimes doesn't know who to fear most, cops or the victim's family wanting to seek revenge. Players tend to embody arrogance and ignorance too, with police authorities. Police officers are here to serve by detecting and preventing crime for the maintenance of public order. In criminology, public order crime is defined by Siegel, 2004, as crime which involves acts that interfere with operations of society, and the ability of people to function efficiently. This behavior is labeled criminal because it is contrary to customs, shared norms, and social values. Many people who rebel against authority tend to think that they're fighting for injustice and forming different perspectives of social norms. And it only makes matters worse, when you don't acknowledge the consequence and self-awareness of actions. These are individuals family members who are killed like savages. Anyone can be fearful if you don't confess the true nature of the crime you have taken part in or witnessed because obviously, you can come up dead. This also means that you have given up on becoming a fighter for what is obedient and right. The cowardly nature after taking part in or witnessing crimes needs a change to the old social views. Teens must be able to make better choices with every choice there is a consequence. Non-supportive parents. There are four quotes that uncertain people tend to use once things go wrong. It is a doggy dog world, however, as a parent, you don't necessarily need to use the quote if you don't work you won't eat, with your kids. Especially, if you haven't been able to provide them with a daily intake of high nutritional and protein foods. Furthermore, this will only instill hatred into their hearts for the person teaching it. The term is a reference in 2 Thessalonians 3.10 For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. The term has also been used by slave owners when their workers were goofing off, and they wanted them to get back to work. While the term is a quote taken from the Bible, back in the day, people only had access to naturally made foods, which didn't have unhealthy substances in the food blends. The quotes usage often happens when a parent is trying to discipline for various things that don't have anything to do with food, and you cannot discipline kids with food this way. Nowadays non-supportive parents, who haven't developed the ability to make wise choices tend to use the quote more so than other parents. And basically, from experience using the quote doesn't necessarily form dignity, grace, honesty, nor respect for people of authority. Especially, if there is misguidance present in the home structure such as parents using their government assistance or work finances, buying alcohol and illegal drugs excessively, and remaining in poverty. Receiving help from the government is a basic opportunity that can help anyone get ahead in life. Those finances are to be spent on high nutritional and protein foods, along with better housing and transportation. Non-supportive parents who use the quote if you don't work you won't eat, also tend to use the quote the white man is keeping me down. Or the black man is keeping me down. Two non-supportive parents tend to use the quote, you are not the parent or you are not a good parent, to their kids with kids of their own. When all these social views have needed new perspectives for quite some time now. As a result of most parents who did these same things rather not take ownership of the negative things they did, which has helped ruin their kids' lives. However, they will quote I've raised my kids right, in a heartbeat. It isn't necessary to go out the way ruining your child's testimony, embodying a double-minded and evasive lifestyle. When embodying excessive arrogance or ignorant behavior, it doesn't say you value the sacrifices Jesus made. You ought to want to do and explain things like a supportive parent because practical formation and responsible conversation heal kids. Ordinary people haven't been willing to change these social trends, but all perspectives weren't put together where they can be ironed out until now. Crime statistics showed in the US during 2014 there were 1,165,383 violent crimes reported this included, aggravated assaults, murder, non-negligent homicides, rapes, and robberies. These crimes were reported by law enforcement. During this time 73% arrested for these crimes were males, and 27% of arrests were females. Aggravated assaults were 63.6% .6 of violent crimes, robberies 28%, rape 7.2%, and murders 1.2%. Property crimes totaled 8,277,829 This included, burglaries, larceny, and motor vehicle thefts. Larceny thefts was 70.8%, burglaries 20.9%, and motor vehicles 83 the financial losses victims suffered totaled $14.3 billion. Arrests during this time totaled 11,205,833, though 498,666 were for violent and 1,553,980 property crimes. The highest number 1,561,231 arrest was for drug abuse, larceny theft 1,238,190 and then 1,117,852 driving under the influence. Violent crimes during 2014 decreased by 0.2%, while property crimes decreased by 4.3% from 2013. Mankind showing remorse. 
cultural refinements have remained one of the hottest topics for centuries now. In the past having and showing remorse meant you feared a wrongful conviction. Today having or showing remorse means the person convicted of a crime, guilt, or innocence can be proven through DNA association. Jesus cried out when he was put on the cross, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27 46, while God would want mankind to know he hasn't forsaken them, DNA can confirm their innocence. In 1989 the first DNA exoneration took place, and statistics showed 20 of 341 people exonerated served time on death row, with 4,658 being the number of years served totally. Out of the 341 people exonerated 36 had pleaded guilty to crimes they never committed. Nevertheless, many African American players since DNA exoneration has been established are more susceptible to committing a crime. And nowadays even with DNA exoneration African American males dominate crime statistics. It is revealed through statistics of belief in God, business, and homeownership, job employment, marriages, other relationships, etc. Over time too many people have become willing to report an African American male for crimes. I remember as a kid, seeing the daily news of many African American guys being put in jail or prison to remain until death occurred. No one was allowed to speak out about it for fear of another wrongful conviction. While society held on to greed and some traditions that were unbearable to live by, these guys were holding on to a set of prison bars for comfort. All this confirms that more guys are wallowing in the denial personification. It is time for African American guys to change perceptions of the past by admitting faults and showing remorse for wrongful actions. Any guy today needs to be able to distinguish between the difference between real danger and empty threats. So, avoid letting your negative emotions of not having proper essentials rule the assignment Jesus requested before his final death decree. Of which is to help others become witnesses of his experiences. It is highly recommended that you examine your instinct with God's intent, to change human actions and behavior on any given basis. If you don't believe in God's power, you won't believe in the human race as a whole. A lifetime of guidance and obedience leads to blessings, hope, and prosperity. And a lifetime of disobedience and misguidance leads to destruction, violence, and incarceration. Deuteronomy 30,15-18, and basically, you walk after defiled flesh which is a symbol of the devil's flesh. It is your choice, so don't blame God or others for the choices you have made when it comes to living to die. Be about his life, and get over yourself, it isn't all about committing crimes. Sympathetically, try sharing the gospel. Homeless statistics showed in the US there were 564,708 people homeless in 2015 this included veterans. There were 436,921 adults and 127,787 children homeless, 69% were living in shelters and 31% on the streets. In 2014 there was 578,424 homeless a decrease of 13,344 from 2013. From 2007 to 2015 the homeless population decreased, but the death total increased due to the increase in gun owners. Homelessness impacted a need for expansion of health program services but overall, the expansions didn't get utilized enough to impact homelessness. Though expansions have decreased due to the state's financial crisis. Involuntary forms of homelessness are the results of drug addictions, crime rates, forms of extortion, mental illness, and sex addictions. Advocating homelessness 30 years. Although mankind evolved from the wilderness, we have revolutionized from valuing a wilderness lifestyle. America where there are tons of opportunities to profit from legal businesses and jobs, due to lack of righteous knowledge of traditions mankind continues to habitat in the wilderness. When you are used to making short-term decisions, you don't take into consideration the world advocates for the here and now, a popularity behavior. And so, you tend to think with an old-fashioned mentality, that often seems out of touch with reality. Nevertheless, the various reasons that people become homeless range from alcohol or drug usage, job loss, no motivation, or willpower to achieve. To a family member taking over government assistance income for their benefit, and taking over a family member's government assistance to benefit, is a form of extortion. Homeless shelters, mental facilities, and prisons are involuntary forms of homelessness. These places were established to help build long-term independence for those in need. Since the world has revolutionized, this should have manifested into less homelessness. However, in the world today there are more homeless individuals than years prior. The Bible says there will be trial tests which means they're not supposed to last a lifetime. Once in a habit of making the wrong choices, you become incapable of being independent of living on your own. Furthermore, you don't set family members up who are capable of living on their own for a lifetime of failure. Whether family traditions are the use of alcohol and illegal drugs, assault and battery, burglary, extortion, pimping, prostitution, robbery, selling illegal drugs, sexual assaults, theft, or vandalism of property. Teaching teens these types of behaviors aren't honorable traditions according to the Bible, 
it will only form homelessness an entire lifetime. Though things needed to embody respect for the Father in heaven are a Bible, purest intent, and natural foods also, you need long-term finances and permanent housing. When you become impatient with family, friends, programs, services, or people of authority, you ought to take a step back to acknowledge the misunderstandings. The result is a devaluation of one's willingness to live and can lead to not exercising obedience to the biblical laws. The laws people follow today evolved from Bible laws. Also, if you are not in a habit of respecting your parents, of course, you are going to have problems following any laws or respecting any type of authority. Old memories of dealing with these perspectives haven't changed anything. You should want to change your thoughts toward these perspectives, to change your beliefs. All this to say, there is more to life than sleeping on the streets. Revenge of wrongful sufferings. When someone has wronged you, ordinarily you suffer affliction or trial tests. But seeking revenge uses energy, emotions, and time, and the emotions alone can take up a lot of time. Through emotions anger, bitterness, distortion, destruction, hatred, murder, slander, strife, torture or violence can be formed. Those are the major emotions revenge uses and any of them can lead to greed. There are other ways of dealing with those emotions. Other great ways of dealing, acknowledge your daily emotions as trial tests, forgiving the enemy 70 times 70, or even reconciling with the enemy. Once you acknowledge the daily emotions as a trial test, simply stay on track with biblical knowledge and don't give up. Giving up during trial test sufferings tend to make them last an eternity. Although the forgiveness emotion doesn't get expressed often, it too is a matter of convenience. When you forgive it doesn't mean forgetting the wrong, basically you let go of the wrong emotions. If you practice reconciliation during forgiving someone before revenge takes place, it is best to come to a saving grace point with that person to prevent becoming a prisoner of the emotions. The saving grace point involves both coming together to set aside the differences along with prayer. Furthermore, when you have wronged someone show remorse by saying, I'm sorry. Appreciation of gratitude. Often not having the essentials such as, comfortable housing, further education, health supplies, supportive parents, and proper guidance, thereafter the influence can be meaningless negativity. While not having those essentials has affected millions of people every day, the way you are trained to show your actions and behavior can become a result of a downfall. And embodying anything excessively can become the result of that. Most people struggle with fear, self-doubt, traditional standard or uncertainties hide behind the reality of overcoming. This means anyone can be classified as cray, cray at some point in life. Normally God will supply all your needs but he won't while lost in sin. And generally, you would need to be obedient to get far in life according to the Bible. The Bible refers to gifts, honors, and rewards, and to achieve rewards you would need to overcome victories. You ought to show gratitude for the things of this world unless you want them taken away. God said, our treasures are in heaven, therefore, you don't become a burden trying to obtain them. This includes the use of alcohol and illegal drugs, assault and battery, burglary, extortion, pimping, prostitution, robbery, selling illegal drugs or sexual assaults, theft and vandalism of property. Also, the quality of being thankful, when others extend their kind hearts ought to be appreciated. Thanks or returning kindness goes a long way. Social inter-circles to become socially interactive. Some people move around a lot, and others get themselves locked up to avoid social interactions. They tend to feel intimidated, and so they rather go through the extremities of trial tests. God would rather you acquire further education to become profitable, rather than advocating destruction and violence seeking homelessness or incarceration as an outlet to hide in fear. The prison system isn't working for most people, and incarceration should be the last thing on anyone's mind. And the social outlets of clubs, night bars, or strip joints won't enable you to claim the righteous victory. Intercircles enable interaction with intelligent people in such places as colleges, church gatherings, jobs, libraries, local gyms, schools, or voluntary work, etc. They are a place for refuge and reinvention, and basically, you are out of danger of wicked people of the world. While communicating with others for long-term guidance, leadership, and structure overlooking the fear of criticism. Either of which will help to embody a righteous personification with concern and value for people in a time of need, and it will help to become spiritually connected. You will ultimately become satisfied with yourself and the direction you are headed, and you will value obtaining a degree of education.